Yeah, it's weird though. Sometimes you don't Mark Jaffe is at the hospital for some vital medical tests. I'm just pretending I'm in Australia while this is happening. His wife Karen is there to support him. <laughs> for it's Karen who has Parkinson's. Mark is one of hundreds of healthy patients taking part in a worldwide trial to find what causes Parkinson's. Those of us who have someone we love and uh, care about that uh, we don't want to see having a struggle with the disease, uh, there's only so many things you can do. I mean, you can't take it away from them, so if, if I can help out by doing this, then I'm happy to do it. Karen is an OBGYN. She was diagnosed at 46. And I said, of course it's not Parkinson's. You know, I had this shoulder injury and I had this injection and I left there and I told everybody I thought he was crazy. And, uh, and then I, he sent me for an MRI, which was normal, so I thought I was right and he was wrong because who gets Parkinson's at age 46 in one arm? That's exactly how almost everybody gets this when they're young onset. You know, Michael J. Fox had a tremor in his little pinky. Five years after her diagnosis, she's still working full-time and still a surgeon. But I found that um, when I operated, it never bothered me. I think I was so focused that it just it bothers me more if I'm sitting doing nothing. But when I'm focused like that, it just I never even would notice it. So what little medication I take always seems to cover me. I've never had any issues whatsoever. I suspect some point that I will. I don't know when that will be, um, and I will... Um, you know, take my, you know, appropriate cues as those things come up, so. Before those things come up, Karen's hoping for a cure. That's the aim of the PPMI study. PPMI stands for the Parkinson Progression Marker Initiative. And this is a very ambitious clinical study to try to identify what are called biomarkers for Parkinson's disease. Now, a biomarker is, is a sim simply any objective measure of the disease. We don't have very good biomarkers for Parkinson's disease in part uh, because it's a brain disorder and it's hard to get at the brain. We can't take a piece out of your brain. Uh, so we can try to do the next best thing. We can uh, take fluid for that surrounds the brain, spinal fluid. We can take brain pictures. We can image the brain using a number of advanced techniques and understand uh, what's happening in the brain in Parkinson's disease. And with these tools, uh, we hope to be able to monitor the disease over time and most importantly monitor whether drugs that we might think might slow down the disease or prevent the disease are effective. This is really the crucial part of PPMI to enable us to develop drugs that might slow or prevent Parkinson's disease. So this will lead us to a cure? We hope that uh, it will lead us to a cure. Open your hand and then close all the way and open fast. The study requires patients with and without Parkinson's so their results can be compared. We're seeing many people uh, who are healthy, uh, healthy people who are willing to really go, go, the, go the long mile of putting themselves out uh, for this study and it's very impressive, it's inspiring. Turn around. Karen's husband Mark is a stand-up comedian and a writer. You'd know his work from some well-known well, Seinfeld time. episodes. The, uh, part about Elena exposing your nipple on a Christmas card, uh, so that's... Uh, that one was all yours. Yeah, that one was mine. He's game to get up on stage, but after an horrific lumbar puncture five years ago, he felt unable to take part in any medical trials. I actually <laughs> asked him about six months beforehand when the PPI, PPMI first came out and he categorically said no. <laughs> and, and, you know, he had a bad experience with his spinal for a surgery and so I just let it alone figuring okay that was that and then he surprised me on our anniversary and he handed me an envelope and in that envelope was his registration, his enrollment for the PPMI study. Once every six months for five years he spends a morning doing tests. As a physician for me clinical research is you know it's, I know that's how we get our answers and it's very difficult to get people to participate in clinical research. In fact most studies don't get finished because they don't have enough enrollment. So to, for him to step up to the plate and, and do this is, is a really um, big thing for me as, a, as his wife, but as a physician as well. So I'm very proud of him. Yeah. How yeah. much do you love this guy? A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> Did you enjoy that today, girls? Yeah. What did you enjoy the most? 
saying Dad was crazy? Saying <laughs> Dad was crazy, did you? In Australia, Clyde and Carolyn Campbell, kids Josh, Zoe and Phoebe, are new recruits in the global search for a cure. Clyde is a self-made millionaire from Sydney. His Parkinson's symptoms surfaced two years ago. Sixty of us in a meeting. I was about two minutes into the opening address um, as CEO for the company and I started to shake. My, my newspaper, the papers I held in my hand started to tremble, which is really unusual for me. So half the brain saying, deliver the speech, tough it up, get through. The other half of the brain's going, what the hell's happening here? The hardest moment was telling the kids. Zoe spoke about it at a speech at the school 12 months later. She said, oh, whenever Dad calls us together as a team, there's normally something wrong. He told us he had Parkinson's and I was very shocked and the next day I asked him if that meant he was going to die because I thought everybody with a disease died. But he said, no, it's just a disease that makes me shake. So you didn't want to be a victim? Well, I didn't want to be a sook about it. For myself, it was all about how to find a cure. His search for the scientist closest to a cure led Clyde to New York City and to a man with just as much drive and determination to solve the riddle of Parkinson's disease. Good to see you. How are you doing? Yeah, really well. So yeah. you find Clyde motivational? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he could... He could sit back and, and, and just, and he can afford to live a private life and to not get involved and to just deal with himself and deal with his own issues. But, but Clyde's enthusiasm is, is, and his purity of motive is contagious. Inspired by Mark Jaffe, Clyde's wife Carolyn now plans to enroll in the PPMI study as well. I'm very happy to take part as a control patient. <laughs> it's the least that I can do.